Hello, hello, Fatima. All right, so welcome everybody to another edition of Let's Talk About Life. I cannot give you the number because I have lost count as to how many calls I have done, but really welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. And every month we take up some topic to talk about. Uh, these are most of the times topics very close to heart and uh, we are here to have a conversation and you are most welcome to bring up any questions that you may have, any shares that you may have, um, you know, whatever shows up for you. It's a conversation today about receive you, even if no one else can, you know. So how often does it happen that we are who we are and we function a certain way and there are people who cannot receive us? just as we are. And when they cannot receive us, what we tend to do is we tend to make ourselves wrong. We tend to uh, judge ourselves and we think we are not good enough or we are less. Uh, we kind of decide that we are, you know, uh, there's something like innately wrong and we diminish ourselves. And just because that person could not receive who we are or what we are being, okay? So how I, I have done that a lot. So this topic comes from that place, okay? That I have invalidated myself and why? Because somebody could not receive me. Somebody could not get who I was. Somebody decided that I don't fit. Uh, somebody decided that I am too much, okay? And so I should tone myself down or dim myself down or make myself less just because you can't get how I function or how I am uh, functioning or who I am being or what I am being. And is that really fair? Um, and even if I didn't have to go to, is that really fair? I mean, when I say, is that really fair? It's not from a perspective of the people who can't receive you, but is it really fair from the perspective of, is it really fair to, for you to not receive you? Okay. Is it honoring to not receive you? Is it something that makes you feel wonderful when you cannot receive you? And by and large, the answer will be no. Okay. Just like we do not like it or we don't feel fantastic when others cannot receive us, then how can we feel fantastic if we ourselves cannot receive ourselves? That is my question. So I realize that I am invalidating me. I have decided that I am wrong. Why? Because somebody cannot receive me. Now, when somebody cannot receive me, they will have their own points of views on the basis of which they will not be able to receive me. And I would make those points of views very personal and, you know, about me, not understanding that, hey, you know, from their perspective, this is what it is and it doesn't work for them or can't be received by them. So what? That doesn't make me wrong. That doesn't make me less. That doesn't mean that I have to tone myself down. So this is what the conversation, uh, this is the gist of the conversation for today. So anybody would like to um, start off, uh, ask something, say something, share something. Hello to everybody who's joining in. So we are talking about receive you when no one else can. So would anyone like to say something, share something? Yes, Rohini. Uh, yes, Smriti. So, um, so there is this person in my family who you know that is not received very well, um, you know, with a few of us. And um, so now when you're talking about this, uh, it's making me think from her point of view that she will not diminish herself 
she will not try and validate herself just because others have a few expectations from her now how does it work both ways because you know the story from both ends and uh, now i'm starting to think from the other person's perspective and how would you uh, then try and explain this situation so there will always be that side of the party which cannot receive someone and then there will be the someone who's who is who they are and uh, that's just how it's going to be so there are two ways there are two not even really two ways um the person who's being who they be uh in this particular case is very clear that this is who i am and i refuse to diminish myself okay. and then from this side the other side the person has to look that what if we were being something that she could not have received has she made that kind of a demand that you must change that you must you must receive me the way i am or yeah. has has uh, you know uh, has the person received you just the way you are so like just like you would love to be received just the way you are can you receive the person just the way they are yeah but uh, to that i would say uh, we also try and kind of adapt to the relationship sure. whereas the other person says that no this is how i am you accept me as i am or you don't it doesn't really matter you know i cannot change for anybody so then there is a clash you know one one is saying i'm not going to diminish myself and the other one the other party is like i am uh, we are okay to you know adapt a certain bit to the relationship um so then there comes the clash correct so then that's where one has got to ask okay what will work for both okay one when one is very clear this is something that is unchangeable hmm does this work for me and if it doesn't work for me then what else is possible here okay okay hmm. so uh yeah what else is possible here because okay. there's always another possibility available and yeah. sometimes it just is what it is and if we have no really no point of view about it then it really doesn't bother it's when we have a point of view uh-huh. about it and when we have a judgment of it that this is how it should be right that's when it creates a problem hmm. okay but yeah. if you're willing to see this is how this person functions which means hmm. this person is not going to adjust i can trust this person to not you know adapt or adjust yeah then how can i function in this scenario so i have a choice to say okay in this area we can't see eye to eye so you know you do it your way and we will do it our way or here are these places where we can see where you're coming from and we can receive that and you know so you've got to ask what else is possible here right yeah so pinky i'm going to go to deepa first and then i'm going to come to you yeah deepa Thanks Priti. Thank you darling. Hi, you're looking lovely. You had Thank a haircut? You. Yes, I did. Mm, Thank you. Very sweet. Okay, so uh, I realize now after having come into access and all that that I was uh, not received as a child to date like in-laws, teachers because I was very naughty, I was very rebellious and all of that. Now I actually I was made to realize uh, in my business group uh when it is about giving i give i don't care whether i get or not i give but then one of my friends pointed out that when uh, you are the go to person in the group and you give but when it's going out or when it's you know making a group for anything uh, you are never involved so i gave them the reply that you know lion walks alone in the jungle he is the king and everybody follows him and i am way ahead uh in everything in this group so probably they are too overwhelmed but then i did realize that where am i not receiving their criticisms and judgments or 
you know it's not only about receiving the good from everybody even the bad so uh this is where i would like to uh, understand and uh, see if there is such change i have never thought about it also and i've never really cared but yeah it does make a difference so uh, we uh, we have like a mixed group of say from 24 to 60 and i'm like very cool and chilled with all of them and we address each other by first names and all that uh sometimes it bothers me otherwise i'm like okay okay so um what do you do about that about what that they can't cope with you yeah they can't cope with me and where am i not receiving probably their judgments and their projections uh how do i put it okay so are you okay being what you are yes i am okay are you willing to let people have their point of view about how you should be i've already allowed them to some extent so then what is the issue so somewhere you know they call me the mother of the group which sometimes i don't like it then then again nena made me realize that i have nurturing qualities and i started actually accepting and acknowledging oh that yes i believe in nurturing okay but sometimes you know uh, the way they call me mother and ma and jag jagat janini and all that i don't like it i mean so so would an infinite being be everything yes so as an infinite being would you be willing to be that too yes yeah so I, So, are you then willing to receive that part of you, that aspect of you, which is nurturing, and that is how it's labeled or called or named? Yes. Yes. So now, do you see a problem there? Mm, no, but yeah. So what happens is sometimes I push them too much because I'm very perseverant, and then I don't realize that I'm pushing them without. them not they don't want to be they don't want to go that further because i can see that if they do that small thing they will go leaps and bounds cool. so that nature of mine you know it even it happens with my sisters cool so are you willing to be aware and see how you can empower instead of disempower mm yeah okay because i can get very, you know me i can get very pushy ha huh. when i have to but do i get pushy all the time no no so when you are willing to receive who you are and when you are willing to receive people just they just as they are then you will not be insistent on people changing and you will learn how to function around it so if somebody is not willing to be pushed to a beyond a particular point and you are willing to be aware you will know how to uh, how much to push and how much not to push so are you willing to be more allowance yeah but see there are certain protocols which have to be followed to be in the group and they have to be done fair enough so how can you find the best way to get all of it done so with some people being pushy will work with some people being an invitation will work with some people another manner will work it will not be the same with everybody because each person is different so if we are willing to receive people just as they are without a point of view or a judgment then you will be to able to see another way but if you want to receive people from your standards that they should fit your standards then you will not be able to see another way to deal with them okay So, so let's say if I if I can receive you just the way you are, I will know. Okay, this is how Deepa functions. So if I want to get this done, this way will not work with Deepa. I'll have to work another way because I have been able to receive you just as you are without projecting as to how you should be by my standards. But Smriti, in a big group of seventy people, sometimes it's very difficult to you know. function each way the receive the person each way they function because sometimes certain things they have to be done the Fair way enough. they are supposed to be so done so what is the problem there 
so when you insist on getting it done in a certain way they call you mother so what correct so what is your issue being judged as janni mata no, or something yeah so sometimes if i'm not in that mindset or mood i don't like it i mean what is this mama all the time so why do you all call me mother half the time <laughs> yeah i call you ha so then correct because i know you're my go to person so you are their go to person mm, yeah right right so are you willing to receive you yes 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 thank you uh, yes. they are receiving you that aspect of you are you willing to receive that aspect of you yes i get it you get it yes awesome so i'm going to go to pinky and then i'm going to come to manisha okay all right sorry uh, can i thank just, you uh, i uh, smriti sunita here uh, sorry yes, sunita it was just continuation of what you were talking should i wait or should i just yeah uh, just hang on let me yeah. just uh, look at what pinky has to say but do do come back okay after manisha yes pinky hi hi uh, actually uh, i wanted to say a big hi to deepa as well we were both in the same school i think she is one or two years my senior okay so So you know uh, how pushy she can get, right? No, okay. no, not at all. <laughs> I didn't know her, uh, and uh, I must have uh, not interacted her too much. But I just remember the name and the face. Yeah, cool. Kasi and I was always outside the class. Cool. Is it okay? <laughs> all right. So, uh, uh, well, when you were saying that uh, you should be received. Uh, the way you are or whatever and the other person is saying that receive me the way i am but i will not make any uh, sort of compromise or change my boundary settings okay so th- when uh, when i feel that if i can be accommodating and receive someone the way they want to be received then is it not correct or not correct correct is not the correct word but then i end up feeling subservient it's like as though i am towing the other person's line all the time then even i also have to get respect and it's not just not necessary but but it's not just that you respect me because i'm respecting you but you respect me as a person damn it cool so why should i not be respected but I, only you will know why you can't be respected but whatever if, it is if you uh, are, as a if, human being i need i have i deserve respect now whether no, you, you deserve whether respect whether we see each whether we see i to i with each other that is secondary okay pinky so pinky, may i ask you a question yes do you respect you yes but i have begun to respect myself more only lately after yes. meeting so, counselors and right. uh, a lot of i needed a lot of pushing to be to even open my mouth and assert myself correct so your point of view creates your reality so if somewhere in your universe you have a point of view that you are not worthy you are not good enough uh, or any such you know points of views uh, where you yourself do not have that deepest reverence for yourself and your life then you will see that getting reflected as your reality okay and yes there will be those few cases which are you know those are people who are purely mean or purely assholes and they will it's not even in their you know fitrat to respect or whatever that's a different story but by and large uh, what i have seen from my life is that i have seen a lot of disrespect and when i have uh, started appreciating my own self and respecting my own self very genuinely it is then that my environment has reflected that same respect adoration and admiration and all of that outside of me so just because i am willing to receive somebody just the way they are does not mean that there is an unwritten contract that i receive you so you must receive me no okay okay, okay? there's But no it's not that transactional case, correct so, correct so, it's not so, a, it's not so, a deal Fine. so so what i'm saying here is what is our topic for today our topic is receive you when no one else 
can. Okay, so if they cannot receive you, you don't have to do tit for tat. Oh, you can't receive me, so I will not receive you. Receiving somebody is this is who you are, and there is nothing that you know. I have decided that I am the authority on how you should be, and I'm go going to change you. Receiving, are you willing to receive you when nobody else can? So if they cannot receive you, just look at, okay, so what if nobody can receive me? Am I receiving myself? Or am I judging who I be? Am I diminishing myself? Am I questioning my worth? So if you have now started respecting yourself, Pinky, that's a fantastic step forward. And you will notice over a period of time when your whole energy has become that of, I am worthy of respect and I respect me, it will then become your reality all the time. So please keep going. Okay. You're frozen now. Can't hear you. It's okay. She can just come back. Okay. Okay. You were frozen for the last okay. minute or so. Okay. So if if you if we are saying, oh, I am willing to receive that person, I am adjusting, I am accommodating. Please look at how many judgments do you have of that person that you have to say words like I am accommodating, I am adjusting. Hmm. You've already decided hmm. many things there. Okay. Hena? So are you really okay. genuinely receiving them with no point of view? That's just the way they are. So when you are aware of who a, what a person is, who a person is, how they function, which means you're receiving them with no point of view, then you have that place where you can have an awareness of how to function with that person. Who says you okay. have to adjust? You may say, okay, in this area, I can't. So let you do it your way and I will do it my way also. Again, there is no hard and fast, you know, standard solutions to every situation or standard answers to every situation. But okay. you've got to be willing to see in this situation, uh, this is how you function. This is how I function. Somehow it doesn't kind of gel together. So, hey, how can we go about doing something like this? Right. Right. And then we find a way where both can coexist. Yeah. Okay. Or there are some places you will decide that, listen, these are few points where we don't agree. We don't see eye to yes, eye. Yes, so yes. let that, let that be. And you agree to accept that difference. Right, right. Totally. Okay? So in that, in that sense, then you're not invalidating the other person, nor are you invalidating yourself. Myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just that I felt diminished. And I felt very sort of let down when, you know, like, like it, it was like, how can you not be supportive? How can you be so nasty for no rhyme or reason? Okay. It, it, so I, I so don't please, mean to criticize yeah. someone, but, but that's how I ended but up. It is, but uh, it is in your universe. So when it is in your universe as a point of view that people are mean and critical or unsupportive, that's what is your reality. So I would invite you to look at what is your belief because there was a time when I felt that people were mean, they were uh, abusive. And that's the kind of people I would have in my universe. So do but, you just think that you should walk off or walk away from that? Because the situation will still remain. It's not solved. Again. If you walk away. Each situation is different. Okay. Some places you may have to walk away. But there are certain places it's not that you have to walk away. It is an invitation for you to look at what is my point of view that is creating this again and again and again in my life. How much will you run? Got From it. who all will you run? So you've got to realize that our point of view creates our reality. So if I am not being received everywhere or I'm being disrespected everywhere or I'm being abused very often, if not everywhere, then what is the point of view I have? And then work within to see that change without. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. you can leave one situation, you can leave two situations, you can leave 10 people. How, how many people will you leave? 
Exactly. If you're not changing what is intrinsic within you. Correct. Correct. So I would invite you to look at what are my points of views about people. Because if my point of view all the time is I'm not supported, I'm not supported, and yes, that is what is actually occurring. But why is this lack of support occurring? What is the point of view I have that's creating this as my reality? What do I need to do here? What do I need to be here? Start asking questions. And believe me, I have literally changed this aspect of my life where I was completely on my own with no money, no job, no, no support, no family, no friends to having such amazing people in my life, so supported. And so I have changed that by changing my points of views. Oh, I'm a victim. I, people are mean. I, no one loves me. You know, I had to change all those points of views. Okay. So I would have picked yeah. those points of views when I was a kid, perhaps, but now I'm an adult. I can't just keep living on, oh, because when this happened with me when I was a kid, so I continue to be a victim forever. No, I'm sorry. I'm an adult. I'm in charge of my life now. Right. Okay. So yes. if I'm seeing this as my result, there's obviously something going on within that is creating this in the first place. So let's look at housekeeping. The inner house. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank All you right. so very much. You're so welcome, my love. So please look at this for yourself and receive yourself. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just because Definitely. someone cannot receive you does not mean that there's something wrong with you or there's something wrong with them. Don't make it personal, but look at what would I now love? Your choice will create. Choice always creates. What would I love? I would love supportive environment. Hey, universe, can I have that, please? So and the question that be, energy. how yes. can I have a supportive home front? How can I would, I love, I would love to be supported. What would I have to do and what would I have to be? Universe, please show me. I'm willing to do what it takes. Yes. And let the universe contribute to you. Okay. Okay, oh. so start choosing a supportive environment. Yes. How it will come about, I cannot tell you. Correct. Okay, in my case, it came about in the, the way of illness. And when I became very ill, uh, there was not, just no choice left but for me to let go of all control. I had to let people do what, what could be done. If it couldn't be done, it couldn't be done. But I just had to allow people to step up and they actually stepped up and they started supporting me. So it actually yeah. turned out that I was the one who uh, actually used to ref refuse to be supported because I was such a control freak. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So it was illness that showed me and oh, yeah. taught me how to receive support. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes, Thank Manisha. You. There's Manisha, then Sunita, and then Natasha. Hi, thank, thank you, Smriti. My answer is all, my question is already answered in a quite well-mannered way. And I'm so grateful for this conversation. So one thing which is left is that uh, this is a reoccurring pattern. Yes, of course, that uh, with the guys I am choosing, they are um, somewhere, somewhat, they had been hurt and all that. And they treat me like, hey, you're a priority, but I would like to have just a casual thing and that doesn't work for me. And it makes me either I have to go very small or I have to not receive. So right now, just I had a conversation something about like that, but I've got clarity around it. Can you just help me with a bit here? What question can I ask to actually know where I am creating it? Because I had okay. been looking forward okay. for a long time. So, so you're an infinite being, do you agree? Yes. You live in an abundant universe, do you agree? Yes. You sure? <laughs> Not when it comes to men. Correct. Yeah. So look at that point of view. So in the infinite field of possibilities, yeah, where every possibility is available, the possibility of you having that loving, caring, nurturing relationship that you, whatever is, whatever it is for you, that relationship also exists as a possibility? Yes, it does. And you are aware that your choice is what creates everything? Yes. Okay. So are you willing to choose that kind of a relationship? I know you desire it, but are you willing to choose it? 
Isso não. Eu Thank you. Okay. So, if you would really like to create that, then first you've got to believe in the possibility. Then you've also got to be willing to have that as your possibility. And then it's definitely possible. How does it get any better? What How is, does it? What, what else is possible here? Thank you. Thank you. Like, You're so welcome, really. my sweetheart. So grateful for this conversation. <laughs> You're so welcome. Yes, Sunita. Um, uh, most if of you the still have the question. No, it's not there, but it's still something is there. Sure, tell me. Uh, I got the answer, but still somewhere I don't know what is that, and I'm still not hundred percent. Okay, there. ask me. Tell me uh, what's your question. I I completely get what you're saying. If you just have to receive yourself, and yes, you receive whether the other person receives or not. And sometimes I feel that like others are saying, I'm receiving everybody and there are people who are receiving me as well. But sometimes I feel I go more extra miles, but I don't actually get that. And I'm okay many a times, but sometimes I feel that I would like to have that. Sure. So when you go extra mile, is it from a place of a transaction? No. It's not then. When I'm doing it, it's not. But when I, when I feel that lonely space or a, when I'm not feeling good about myself, then I feel somebody give it to me. And then I start going into that. But it, when I'm doing it, it's not coming from that. Okay. So why do you even get to that space where you need somebody to validate you? So what is your point of view about you that keeps you from receiving you? Not good enough. And everything that is, will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and fork, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. So uh, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and fork, all nine shots, boys and beyonds is what we call the access clearing statement. And if you'd like to know more about that, you can go to theclearingstatement.com to uh, you know, get an idea about, get an explanation about what it means. And Dr. Dane here, who's the co-founder of Access Consciousness has uh, created a beautiful video explaining the clearing statement and it enables us to change anything that is limiting us okay so what have you decided about you sunita um that keeps you from receiving you uh, what have i decided about me it's like uh, going on and off sometimes i feel i'm enough sometimes i feel i'm not good enough Sometimes I'm like, yeah. oh, I can't do anything. Sometimes I can't do anything. It's like, it, so it, what it, would, yeah. So what would have to occur for you to be able to truly believe in you and receive you? I don't know. Okay. So there will be days when you will be high on life. Yes. And then there will be days when you're not exactly high on life. Yes. Yeah. However, if you're willing to receive you, yeah, and who are you? You're an infinite being. So if you're willing to truly receive you, truly, truly, truly. Okay. That, is that side of me also. Yeah. Yeah. I've been trying now to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So then even a non- uh, then even on those days when the little bit of light is like out, uh, that bit of you will not get rattled. You'll only know, okay, you know, the energy is a little off and I just need to get back. But you won't get rattled. You will not require somebody to validate you. Yeah. It's just the energy levels, your vibrations will need to be just adjusted a bit and that's it. Yeah. yeah. But you will not get rattled because the core of you you know who you are and you're, yeah. you receive yourself. Yeah. So that questioning will not come. I may be down and out for a bit, but I will not be questioning the essence of me. Yeah. So is, is it that me receiving others, just going on receiving and without any expectation, am I giving any thought that it's okay, you don't receive me, but I'm still going on receiving you? I mean, I don't know. Is it well, any... 
Well, technically, if we are all part of oneness, uh, the way to stay as part of oneness is to receive everybody just the way they are. Doesn't mean that I uh, have to love everything, but that doesn't mean I have to have a judgment about it all. That's just what it is. It's like being allowance. This is who you are. This is what it is. It's not a thing about, oh, I don't like this about you. I don't like, it's like, yeah, you're an apple. Okay, you're an apple. That's it. So when we are not willing to receive people, what we have to do is we have to separate. And when we separate, we are putting evil in the world. That is an unconscious choice. And when you separate, that person cannot contribute to you any which ways. So even when you're not in on, when, even when you're not talking to people, you're not in touch with people, but you're willing to receive them and not cut off, not exclude them, they can still continue to contribute to you at a molecular level, at an energetic level. But when you have a judgment of, oh, why are they like this? Why can't they be like that? Da, 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 da. You've separated, you've chosen unconsciousness. They cannot contribute to you. What you judge cannot contribute to you. What if I have no, no judgment, but I'm, I'm, I am standing on a point that this is what is required for me. For an example, in a relationship, I am just putting my foot down that I am, this is, I'm not going beyond this, but I'm not separating in the love or the, the oneness is all there, but there is a, probably a gap right now, periodically. Yeah. So, uh, so I would look at, I would look at the question, what would I really love? And then ask, what would I have to do and be to actualize this with ease? I would focus on not what is missing, but I would focus on what would I really love? Because what you put your att attention on is what you create. Whatever is your point of view going on in your universe is what's getting created as a reality. So, okay, this is what it is right now. I'm not feeling very supported or I'm not feeling very loved or you know, whatever it may be for you. I'm just taking Pinky's example of, I'm not feeling supported. And okay, so what would I really love? Oh, I would love to be supported. So what does being supported look like? And then get the, what does being supported be like? What does it feel like? And get the energy of what, what do you mean by being supported? And then let the universe know, hey universe, I'd like to have that please. Yeah. Show me what would I have to do? What would I have to be? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it will come around, it will come about. Yeah. It comes one, about. One, one more question. You were talking yeah. about patterns and uh, you were talking about repeating the pattern, right? So somewhere this pattern of an unavailable partner, I know it's there for some time now, right? And I don't know what, I, I'm not able to uh, find out where, what point of view is creating that. What is that I am repeating that? Okay, so when you, uh, so, okay. Um, here's when a question. I, unavailable, I mean to say that, that the people have no time for me. Or cool. All right. Do they, okay. Do they truly even want to be there for you? They have to answer it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tap into your awareness. Would they really like to be there for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what would have to occur or what is required for them to be able to be available for you with ease? Uh, grow and go beyond that person's whatever limitations right now. Okay. So all the points of views, all the judgments you have of that person, will you now destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, what for call nine shots, person beyond. So everything that your relationship is with that person, will you now destroy and uncreate it all, please? Right, wrong, good, yes. bad, what for call nine shots, person beyond. So all the projections, expectations, separations, rejections, judgments you have put upon that person, will you now destroy and uncreate it, please? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, what for call nine shots, boys and beyonds, and all the projections, expectations, separations, rejections, and judgments you have had put upon you by that person, will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, what for call nine shots, boys and beyonds. Nishita, do you need me to go slower, darling? I just realized I completely forgot. Okay. 
Okay, let me know. All right, if you need me to go slower. Okay. So, are you willing to tap into your awareness of what's really required? Yes. Okay. So, normally when something like this is occurring, just because we want the person to be available doesn't mean the person has to be available. You've got to be willing to tap into the awareness. Is this person interested in being available? And sometimes, like now you got a yes, but there could have been a situation where it would have been a no. Now what? Then, are you willing to receive that? awareness and then not try to force something that is not interested in coming into existence correct yes it's not going to create anything greater when you're trying to force something to come into existence when it's not ready to come into existence yes and that's the reason i ended my first relationship because it was happening by force and, and it, it was a clear no that i don't want to yeah. So, so what's the value of choosing unavailable partners? Prove and everything that, that is. <laughs> and everything that is, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pork, all nine shots, birds and beyonds. So what is the value of choosing unavailable partners? What do you get to do and be that you could not have gotten to do and be if that person was too or too much around you? And everything that brought up, will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pork, all nine shots, boys and beyond. So if it is something that's occurring again and again, there is a value in it for you. Yes. <laughs> okay, so go there, Sunita. All right? Yeah, thank you. You're so welcome. Yes, Natasha. Yeah, hi, Smriti. Hi, hi. Natasha. <sighs> How are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Uh, Smithy, I want to ask that uh, I've just launched my uh, book. Yes, online. and congratulations. Yeah, thanks so much. It, I was getting the energy and finally I did it. And of course, I had a virtual one because of yes. Corona. I'm so, aware. I remember I was teaching that day and I couldn't attend. Yeah, I know. And But like, uh, I know you told me genuinely, but you know, I, I learned a lot through the book. I sent invites to many people. But you know, sometimes when people don't respond, now it hurts me. <laughs> okay. So, and, so the, no, then I don't like it. Then I at least respond whether it's a yes or no. So even I have to prepare, you know, it's a lot of work. It sounds very easy, but now I know, you know, when you do even online sessions and workshops, how much it takes. And this was one question. And the second question is, I one second, one second, one second. Can you go back to when you do online sessions, how much it takes? Yes. And everything that is, will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pork, all nine shots, boys and peons. Mm. I, mean, I, I mean, I was just thinking organizing an event is not easy because I was doing everything on my own. So I, I needed confirmations. I had to prepare. So, you know, sometimes it hurts me when people don't respond. Okay. Uh, so where is it written that everybody must respond to Natasha Advani? No, but at least say yes or no after two days, three days. I mean that way. Okay. But if they don't, can you force people to respond? No. No, but I was just thinking, why don't they respond? Like, if, see, if I don't want to go somewhere, don't I just say yes or no? No, that way I'm saying. I can turn around and say, did I ask you to send me an invitation? Did you ask me if I want to be invited? No, but if you're inviting, it's out of, you don't ask people, no, Madhav? You invite out of your... Okay, season. so you invite, but can you give the person the right to respond or not? Okay. Okay, fine. No, just... Uh, okay, don't matter okay. Me, so no. what's really going on here? No, because I feel, uh, I don't like it when people don't respond, you know. So what is your point of view here? What is your conclusion here? That people don't? 
We don't like me. <laughs> no, I won't say like me, but you can't just give that much of your time, I mean. See, I know people are busy, genuinely busy, but tell me something, when you really want to attend something, don't you take out the time? Not you, I mean whoever. Yeah. So, so, what, does that, so what does so, that tell you? So what is the conclusion that you have arrived at about yourself? <sighs> that people are? mean when everything that is really destroyed and uncreated yes i don't mean all people but <laughs> yes yeah okay. okay i get what you're saying so everything that is really destroyed and uncreated yes right wrong good bad what fuck all nine shots boys and beyonds So, but like, see, suppose when you're having a party, you expect a yes or no, right? When you're having your party or anyone. Sure. You're not saying you have to come, but at least you expect a reward. No. Oh, you don't? Here's a party. You want to come, come. Am I frozen or Natasha is frozen? No, but then you have to organize. Yeah, I agree. I get that, sweetheart. I get the organization perspective. But when I invite, I don't invite with all conditions and expectations. Okay. Okay. When I invite, I'm willing to receive a no-show. Okay. Okay. And when I do require confirmations from a logistic perspective, it's genuinely from a logistic perspective. It's okay. not from the perspective of, I wonder how many people are going to come to my event. Okay. Okay. So that energy, when I ask that question, hey, uh, I need to organize a few manuals or something, whatever it is. Could you please let me know if you're going to be there? So that thing about, you know, that thing about, uh, I hope people come to my event energy is not there. Okay, that may, okay, got it, yeah. There's a difference. Hmm. Yeah, okay, got it, yeah. Okay. So it's an energy of, it would be wonderful if you join us. And no scene if, you know, if you can't, that's okay too. And I ask for confirmations from that energy. Okay. Not from that place of, I just, will anyone come? I want to know. So maybe when I ask for a confirmation, then that way I'll get an idea. No. And okay. it could be genuinely from a logistic perspective, but there could also be that energy going on underneath. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Where I'm judging my popularity, whether I'm I'm judging whether I'm liked or not by the number of okay. confirmations okay. I'm getting. Okay. And then well, that confirmation, I... yeah, then that confirmation becomes a very significant thing, because okay. it's linked to my validity. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. But of course, I had the most awesome one. It was just outstanding. And I was so happy. Fantastic. Because I asked Fantastic. so many questions. And it was like, I couldn't believe that such a thing could happen online. Yeah. And people had to contribute, contributed. So yeah. I don't, after so access, that's I what... don't expect. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you, you invite whoever you would love to invite, but do it from that place of... Uh, and yes, of course, if there's etiquettes about responding, I'm not denying all of that, my sweetheart. But also get that everyone will function in different ways. Not everyone will respond. You may not matter to everyone. Yeah, no, I don't. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So some people may not have that courtesy 
or you know that etiquette or whatever may be the reason one yeah, okay. yeah but can i receive that okay without making it uh you know why are people like this and why are that's just the way they are now you know na who cares and who doesn't yes okay cool like when i got published the people closest to me didn't even bother to buy my book acha yeah acha yeah so so you didn't get angry by then i had worked quite a bit on myself so i did but if it had been an old smithy oh my god i would have sulked about it for 10 years <laughs> no i'm getting there yeah but um yeah Um, okay not a lot of clarity yeah and also i want to ask like i can see things shifting but you know sometimes i feel i'm doing and not being the energy sometimes i feel i'm being the energy not doing so i have to work on that cool go for it and also uh, uh, before i chose uh, i asked a lot of questions before choosing the publisher and i felt light i chose it but after i chose it now it's not been very easy and i'm going through a lot of turmoil because the person is not understanding what i'm trying to say and i want to get physical copies but i'm scared i'm not sure whether this person will be able to do it so i am worried what should i do okay what's required here that's it i asked what else is possible that i don't think is possible i asked that also that's fantastic too Yeah, I asked that. And what else is required like, here? What else? Yeah. Okay. So you're getting Good. some nice feedbacks on the chat. Do read it, Natasha. They all for you. To me. Yes. Oh, I didn't see. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. you'll see because you were engaging. In, you were engaging <laughs> in a conversation. But you can see them in the chat. <laughs> yeah. You you see the chat now. I do. Okay. Because a lot of people here I knew are invited. So. <laughs> and they know who i am so they know i'm a baby i just get angry for the time being and then i'm all right yeah <laughs> cool awesome thank you so much yeah thanks. you're so welcome my love all right so are you willing to receive you even if no one else can you no know, sometimes i get a no <laughs> yeah so please look at this what does that create for you are you willing to receive you yeah thank you you're so welcome so don't let somebody make you feel less by saying oh you're too much oh you're like this oh you're like that you are who you are but i guess you know when we can receive ourselves at least that's what i see when i can receive me um there's just ease all around then it does not matter whether somebody can receive me or can't receive me i'm willing to honor whatever their position is sure you can't receive me that's completely all right no problem that's okay yeah so can't receive can't receive no problem i can receive that i can receive you not receiving me okay anybody Hi, yes hi gitu you how are you no no how are you hi very well looking, thank you you're looking as pretty and vibrant as ever thank you very much honestly thank you um, smriti when you talk about receiving yourself and not being able to receiving yourself receive yourself has it got anything to do with i i keep choosing cf i keep dropping the choice i keep choosing cf i keep dropping the choice i keep choosing bas facilitator and i keep uh, dropping the choice and i really have no clue why i keep doing that i just do that 
every year, every year, every year. Is that really true that you don't, is that really true that you don't have a clue? For the moment, I think I don't have a clue. <laughs> right now, I think I don't have a clue. It's like, okay. I have all my prereqs done, everything is there. And I don't know, am I not receiving myself or, or what am I waiting for? I, I just don't have clarity about it. <laughs> you tell me, are you not receiving you? Do you get a yes? Do you get a no? No, I'm not receiving me. Okay. And you not choosing to be the CF, has it got anything to do with you not receiving you? I have a lot of ifs and buts, I guess, with being yeah. a CF. Oh, there are too yeah. many. Forget it. I'm not being another one. Right. So what are your conclusions about what it will entail being a CF? I mean, I always get into a few questions. Where will I go? Where will it take me? And then I'm like, okay, Chadia, something else, you know? Right. And I just so how much do you, step. yeah. So how much do you not take that step because you are, uh, you don't have it laid out on platter, the whole, you know, future path. That's it. Yes. That yeah. It. Like if you were given an assurance that you will get thousand participants for foundation, then would you choose it? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah. So how much are you not willing to embrace uncertainty? Yes. So how do I get over that? Uncertainty is something I do not, I mean, yeah, yes. But that's, I, that's exactly where you've got to, you've got to cho choose and create with your choice and not be vested in the outcome. So are you willing to, like, for example, uh, last year, uh, there was this program that I came across, which I had really been looking for. It was my ask that I want a program like that, okay? Uh, and uh, when, I got, when I was given the, uh, the pricing, it was $30,000. And I had like half an hour to make a decision to make that investment of $30,000. And uh, I didn't have it like just lying around, but I knew that it is something that I have been asking for and it has shown up. And I had no clue whether I'll be able to even recover that investment once I got my certification. But all I knew was that this is something I've been asking for. This is something that I would like to take out into the world. And then it doesn't matter whether anybody will choose it or not, but this is my ask and it has shown up in my universe and I'm going for it. I had no idea whether I'll be able to recover, whether people will choose the program that I'm you know, putting all my savings on the line for, but I just went ahead and I chose it. I just took that leap. And once I took the leap and I completed the payment, in fact, they offered me eight installment plans, but eventually I just paid it up all in two weeks time. And uh, every day I would like, I would express my gratitude. I'm so glad I chose this. I'm so glad I chose this. I'm so glad I chose this because of the way I grew from it. And I've just, concluded a batch of uh, 10 people. I've started a new batch of five people and one person is doing it as a one-on-one -on -one coaching, you know, so that's already 16 people chosen. Wow. 17, sorry, bad wow. math. So <laughs> some of them are here on this, on this group. They've done the program with me. It's called working with the laws. And I've Working been wanting to teach that for a while. And I, I, I just took the leap. I didn't know whether anyone will choose it or not. So that's exactly the, 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 the thing is there. Like every time I want to choose CF, a very funny thing. Every time I want to choose CF, something else comes in front. Like I was wanting to choose CF, GRT came in front. I wanted to choose CF. Uh, so in front. just check, is, is, CF, if, is CF something that you really want to be? When, you, when you're being a CF, what does being a CF mean to you? Is it something that, you know, ignites your world? Is it something that makes you like, like for me, I said, I don't care. I, I, this is what I want to do. So do you so truly, can... truly even have that about it? As I said, I don't have clarity about it because the minute yeah. I choose it, something else comes. So I take it as a universal sign. No, 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 no. Don't, don't blame the, the universe. Part. Don't blame the universe for this. Don't I go with science. I go with science, basically. I do, I do 10 things simultaneously. I Me don't too. say, oh, yeah. So I teach different things simultaneously. And each of it is, each of those uh, 
uh, you know, modalities are absolutely like things I truly love. And I teach each of them with, you know, same amount of dedication. Oh, yeah, I, I know it. that. Okay. I know. So, no, so sorry. I don't, I don't think it's that. I think it is, you know, like what I would invite you to do is really, really look into what is the reason why I say that I would like to be a CF and what is it that keeps me from choosing it? What is really going on here? The thing is like, the, whenever I choose it, something else comes up and I'm like, okay, let me try this. Let me sure, try you can try that, but you can do both. But do you really want to create what uh, you could create as a CF? I think, look at that, please. I don't have clarity about that. I yeah, don't have clarity. Look at I'm actually basically, as you said, waiting to be served everything on a silver platter. That's the attitude I've had since always. You know, oh. like, give me what you want. That's it. I'm going to flow. Okay. So then just, then just, then, then just go with the flow. So that's exactly what I mean. When something else comes, so I feel probably this is the flow right now. So, so I flow probably, with probably CF is not what you really truly desire to be. N not CF, like bars facilitator, CF or anything. Any, yeah, any CFBF. So that's what I'm saying. You've got to be willing to see when I, Think about being a CF and creating those classes or being a BF, creating that. Does it make you come alive? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, it's not exciting enough for you to want to do it. I thought probably some resistance from my side, you know, I'm resisting something. Which so if, if you think you're resisting something, then ask, what is it that I'm resisting? Okay. Only you will know, right? True. So what does it mean to be a CF? What does being a CF mean to you? What, uh, you know, what is it about it that uh, keeps you from choosing it? There must be something. Absolutely. Yeah, there must because be something. As an infinite being, it's not that I can only teach one thing at a time. I can facilitate different things at the same time. I mean, no, that's not a limitation in my world. I am a that person multitasker that's not a limitation so then but if the universe, is, so universe hmm. has sent you cf and universe has sent you gft at the same time hmm. what stops you from doing both but do you truly want to create buzz classes do you truly want to create foundation classes even if you have no guarantee of whether anybody will ever choose your class or not okay probably i'm looking out for certainty that is what it is cool so there you go. So now would you like to take a leap of faith? Yeah. So if you were being a CF, what would you create in the world? Is it something that you truly desire to create? Okay. Yes. So look at that. Thank you. Let's Thank you so well, much. my darling. What is your program called anyways? Sorry to interrupt you, but... Uh, uh, so there are five programs that I teach of which the one that I've taken off with, which is, which was the one that I really wanted to teach was working with the laws. Working with the laws. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Check into it. Thank you. You're so welcome. All right. Anyone else? Smriti, I do want to ask something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. No, that's all. Let's see, you say when you, you wanted to do the program, you did it. By the way. So suppose I also want to do some things, but if it's not happening, why is that? I mean, if I want to do certain coaching or whatever program. What do you mean it's and, not happening? No, I mean, I've asked, but it's not still actualized. Yeah. So what is it that still is required from you for it to actualize with ease? No, but you know, when you say it, it sounds very easy. <laughs> It is easy. So every way you've decided that is difficult and that's making it difficult. Will you destroy and uncreate? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shots, boys, and beyonds. Okay. Because I, I know, you know what I'm talking about. It's been a few months now, but I'm still not being able to actualize, you know, so that's why. Right. So what else is required? Sneeta, I'll ask, Sneeta, I'll ask Nana to get in touch with you. So basically, these are uh, 11 laws um, um, that govern the universe. 
and how do you uh, function in harmony with those laws like for example there's a law of gravity okay that's a physical law so um because that law exists yeah uh if you jump out of the window you're not going to fly you will go down because there's a law so when you're aware of that law or even if you're not aware but you know that if i jump i will fall down so you don't jump and as of course you want to but you don't right you be aware that oh i i'm too much at the edge i'll fall over so because you're aware of the law so you work in harmony with that and if you don't you will get injured so same way there are laws like uh, law of compensation law of uh, vibration which is also known as law of attraction so if you know how a law functions or how the universe functions then you can work in sync with it to create something greater smriti that sounds really interesting tell us something more about it please so i'll get nena to share the flyer with you okay thank you all right can i yes smriti. smith hi whose guitar is that so i have my sons okay <laughs> as what do you yeah. play the guitar and i am not aware of it oh, no i was do the keyboard at some point but not the guitar oh okay no okay so i've been listening to people and then the thought comes to me that i also have this issue my issue is that yes i i want to do things i want to do something i'm very committed to it but i will find excuses reasons things to do so that i procrastinate i so push are it away you, so ismat are you interested or are you committed no i'm committed but i'm i don't know what maybe it's a sense of failure maybe it's a sense i don't i can't put a finger on it you know it just gets me it's not like one thing whatever it is at any point of time if there is okay. something i really want to do i will push it away the one thing that i want to do most i will do last so by the time i reach that spot i am already exhausted tired and i don't want it i don't so, have time so 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 what's the value of this i i i want to figure out why i do this okay so can you be more specific what is it that you would really love to do and you've been pushing it away okay so the the most important thing for me is the breast cancer awareness right, right. now i've been working on that very much and uh, and 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 somehow i lost the drive and uh, i know i have to pick it up i have to work on the website i have to just go okay. forward with the next step okay But so one I second don't do it one, one second one second you don't have to do anything i know i don't that's the sad part i want would to you, would you like to is it something that you believe that you have to do because you've been through the experience yes. no. or is it something that it you would something love I, to do no i feel i am responsible for it and i yeah. have to so that's what i'm saying there's nothing that we have to do that's not fair i have to do it yeah so naturally if you're going to force yourself to do it you're always going to find excuses not to do it because it's coming from a sense of it's my duty it's my obligation so how to make myself love doing it now that's another why can't you acknowledge that that's not something that you would love doing or maybe you would require to do it in another way that would be fun for you yeah maybe that's it. i've got to change my approach Yeah. but then that's that's in everything like if i'm painting no i'll leave the damn thing and i'll go and do i do random things here okay it's like so, i love painting but i will go to cook and i'll spend bloody one hour cooking nonsense things which nobody is interested in why i'd rather spend my time painting okay so, so if you like complete... i'm beating myself up you know it's okay. like i'm 
Okay. I'm sorry if I'm being very not at all. Here. But but what if you completed your painting? What would occur? It would be over. It would be over. I mean, I have to do the next thing. I don't. Know. It would be hard. I, no. Completed okay. If you completed your painting, what would occur? I would feel a sense of accomplishment. I would feel right. so good. Yeah. So, so, are you going to allow yourself to feel good? Have you put a limit on how good can you feel at any given point of time? Yeah, maybe that's it. So, you know, I'm not allowed of, to feel good. Yeah. So as part of the, I have the, something called the L Club, E-L Club. It's called the Empowered Living Club. And in fact, uh, this month's topic was exactly about this, how we all have an inner thermostat. So the moment we reach that threshold of how happy we have decided we are allowed to feel, we will create some distraction, some drama, some nonsense, that will uh, limit the amount of joy, happiness, success I can enjoy. Okay, so let's say you're doing phenomenally well. Yeah, financially, maybe you're in your relationship. Let's say financially, you're doing very well, you're very successful, you will create some problem in your relationship, or you'll create some problem with your health. Yeah, okay. that's true. So that's you true. will, you will, oh my God, I can't afford to be so happy. So there are certain underlying hidden beliefs, which, uh, which uh, kind of come to play and they say, no, you cannot be that happy. Okay, enough. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so check, uh, is there a thermostat? And you will notice, you will notice that any time you will look back, you will notice that every time you have gone beyond a certain level of happiness, some issue has gotten created in your life. True. Absolutely true. So yeah. now how does one go beyond? Yeah. So the moment you're beginning to create crap, check in. Am I limiting myself? And, uh, and also look at the hidden beliefs. Are you feeling internally flawed? Are you feeling like you're not good enough? So you don't deserve this much happy. I'm not worthy of this much happiness. So look at that. I'd invite you to go slightly deeper. Okay. And also, uh, how much do you matter in your life? How much does your know. happiness matter? In comparison with the rest of the family, I don't know. I put everyone first always. I mean, don't we all, all we women do that, right? Precisely. So, but no, but I had to learn to change that. I put myself first now. But it's not me versus them. I'm doing it's, that. it's a kingdom of we. So in access consciousness, we have this concept of kingdom of we where you are also included in your equation of life. So do you put yourself also in the equation of your life? And when we put ourselves in the equation of our lives, it's not from the perspective of me against them or them against me. It is me and you, all of us, we. Uh, put yourself in the equation of life. What was the question you asked? How, you asked her one question for this. How important are you? What was it? Sorry. Yeah. Are you, are you priority in your life? Something like that. Yeah. Are you priority in your life? Do you matter? Yeah. Do so you if, painting, matter? if painting gives me joy and believe me, I paint despite my mad schedule. Okay. I still manage to paint. I'll show you my current one. Here in the middle of my very hectic schedule, I'm painting this at the moment. Okay. I don't That's stop. So pretty. So many colors. I may not be able to paint uh, five hours a day. I would love to if some days, but some days I do that too. But yeah, I, I put what would bring me joy and I do all the things that bring me joy. I have stopped doing things I have to. No. And yes, there will be few things that I have to, but then I do it from a space of joy. Thank you. Yeah. So that for your breast sense. cancer awareness, 
uh, it's not something that you have to, it's not necessarily your responsibility, my love, but if you feel called to create something, then create it in ways that will be fun for you. Thanks. Maybe those seminars are not the way to go. Maybe there's got to be some different way that you would enjoy more. No, yeah. I, yeah, whatever. This, so, yeah, right. Yeah, and please don't judge yourself when you can't because there's also this uh, concept of, uh, you know, there are two kinds of people. So there's this one kind of people who can never uh, do only one thing. They have to do multiple things and they don't necessarily complete projects. So they jump from one to another because you get bored and fed up very easily and quickly. That's just how you function. So which means at any point of time, you need to have at least 10 things going on uh, so that you can feel all alive and excited. That's me. So when you jump from one to another to another, please do not judge yourself. Now, this is where receiving you comes in. Can you receive you, Smriti, just as you are? One sec, huh, Deepa? So can you receive you as this being who cannot, who cannot just do one thing? And you do things in 20 minute increments or 40 minute increments. So you've done like 20 minutes of painting, I'm done. Now I need to go do something else. And that's okay too. So all the rules that you have about how you must live your life, will you now destroy and uncreate them all, please? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shots, boys and beyond. So whose standards are you judging yourself by? And everything that is, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. Picasso never worked on one painting at a time. Picasso made 28 paintings at the same time. He would move from one to another, to another, to another. Yeah? So recognize, this is how you function. It's not something wrong. I have switched so many careers and I used to think, why can't I be like normal people? Why can't I be like, you know, dedicated and committed in one field? Why do I have to keep doing 50,000 things? But then I came into access consciousness. We learned this concept that there are like two kinds of people and one of them is our breed, okay? And the other quality about our breed is to judge ourselves. All right? So, sweetheart, you're fine. Okay. Just find ways okay. to do things which will make you come alive and will you'll be eager to do them. Not from a place of, oh my God, I have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, all the time I'm doing stuff. Keep it's just that I have one thing in the back of my head. Yeah, there are 50,000 okay. things we want to do, Ismat, and that's okay. Can I, can I show you my painting? Can I yes, show you please show me. That's going on? Meanwhile, I've got to take Deepa's sure. question. Oh, you've got the painting right here? Oh, my God. I can't see them in too much detail, but yeah, they're looking gorgeous. Are those marigolds? No. Are those magnolias? They're beautiful, Ismat. I want you to send me yeah, a close snapshot later on my person chat. Yes, Deepa. Yeah, so talking about this, my whole life, I have joined classes and I have left them incomplete because I used to get so bored. So now, uh, is there a difference between this and being committed? Because you can't keep on doing this. So how do you define or explain that your commitment and this whole thing about leaving things are you committed to learning yes fir ho gaya jitna seekhna tha seekh liya ho gaya yeah like i shared with you another time as well do you think i read i read a lot of books but i don't necessarily read all the books page to page i purchase a lot of classes but doesn't mean i listen to every class back to back the ones that I really require, I go into detail. The ones I just need to have in my awareness, I just have them in my awareness and that's it. So, But I like to have them. Yeah, so because of this whole thing about, you know, not reading books and keep on buying them, I'm going to sign up for a class called 
speed reading read 100 books in a year cool but again uh, do you read because you love reading or do you read because you think you have to so smriti this is a very funny thing you know i've still not got the answer or the awareness i used to read i used to read so much i wouldn't keep the book till i read it so much so because of, before my 10th standard english final exam i was reading the promise my mother caught me red handed yeah then when i was pregnant i don't know what happened i just stopped reading i'm okay. still a member of the shemaru library in town and i still have these books and i keep on buying them but i don't know what is it i have i become restless or what i even the science of getting rich i started it the bookmark is still on the page where it is i have not touched it i don't know why okay i really can't tell you why you got to ask what's really going on here do i enjoy reading if i was reading what would it contribute to me is it worth it worth it then for me reading is like i can't do without it so what me, reading creates for me is invaluable so i've stopped reading newspapers a long long time ago like cool. uh, years but this reading books see i know the reading book will contribute it will matter but i just don't get to uh, uh, okay i don't get to uh, read uh, open the book if i open the book i don't i don't know where i'm stuck to move further or complete it and there was a time when i kept four read uh, books on my coffee table so every day i see them do you enjoy reading yeah i do i do but uh, not for long like you know that deepa who used so to fine. never put the book How? down okay so there was a time when deepa could read right till the last page and wouldn't put the book down but right now do you want to read yes okay i do okay can you can you read one page yes 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 fine so read how much you can don't judge what you can't do what you used to do right now if you like reading open the book and read one line make a start if you get fed up after one line stop pick up the book next time and read another line start if you would truly like to read but you cannot say i am not going to read because i can't read like i used to before and i will not read till i can read like i used to before so you will never read at all because yes yes i get that yeah and so all the expectations that you have put upon yourself and all the projections you have put upon yourself with regards to your reading will you destroy and unfail it yes right wrong good bad what for call nine shots boys and girls and this other thing about being lazy you know or taking things for granted like when i when i listen to your call uh i i realize that it contributes so much which i can then apply to the uh, classes further on and i remember i wrote on the group i'll take down notes and that was something so nice but you know i'm very lazy i just sit on it because i know it's there good it's so does it create access. does it create wonders for you <laughs> no okay but i have a choice no so how do i push myself to come out Move of your this? ass get to work okay straight answer <laughs> oh <Move> yeah <your ass. laughs> is being lazy creating your life or if it is go ahead be more lazy but if it's not creating then what <laughs> would create oh taking this action then go ahead take that action so you know i always also have these phases where i feel oh wow i created so much and then one I second one second H- how much success are you willing to have ah uh, what limits have you decided correct 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 yeah that's what if you're I... getting that much you're not interested in going beyond because that much is enough for you correct correct so then correct. that's fine so then what do you do to keep keep on the go and stop limiting yourself 
are you willing to have a target for yourself? Ah, okay. I have a target. I've <clears> never worked on targets. So fine, if it works for you, cool. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, fine. So I got to be fine because you know, even when I was growing up, I had no goals, no ambition. Listen, darling, you've got to decide. Just growing up, yeah. Yeah. I was enjoying so, life. Cool. If that works for you, that's fantastic. Okay. For me, I would like to have a certain amount of income coming in. I would like to have certain amount of certifications. I would like to have certain amount of people I'm facilitating. I have targets for myself. And then I do what it takes to, ha to you know, actualize all of, all of my, you know, targets. One of my targets was to learn to have big targets. Not be afraid of having big targets. So, I, and that drives me. Right. I, I know what I would love to have and I go for it. So, if this is what you would like to have and you're happy with that, that's it. You don't have to have big goals, big targets. You don't have to. Have. There's nothing but, that you have to do, have to have. What is working for you? Is it, if this is good, this is good. Like for me, not being able to do, you know, a uh, few classes every month was not working for me. So I said, hey, I would love to have more money to be able to do more classes, learn, you know, attend more classes. And I started earning more money. Because I love that. So what do you love? Okay? Yes. Yeah. And maybe you. also, I, want, I would like to add, when you say you want certain things so you have to push yourself now come out of your comfort level and not necessary is going to be easy no it's not going to necessarily be easy but there can yeah. be ease you can have ease it may not be easy but you can have ease yeah i get a little confused with this okay if you have no point of view about it you will have ease with even that which is not easy like if I had to make that whole cancer business, uh, oh my God, significant, bad, horrible, then I would have had a tough time. But because I ha did not make it significant and all of that, I, I had quite a lot of ease with it, even when I was like dying with pain. But still, there was a sense of ease in my universe. I dealt with it all with far more ease than I would have if I had had a point of view about it. Okay? So. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> can I ask a parting question? Yes. Hi. Hi. Sorry, Hi. If, you're, if you're running out of time, I can do it later. Okay, go yeah. for it. This is the last it's question, question. Okay? It's a happy question. I'll happy question. Okay. <laughs> okay, so thermostat, yes, sorted. Getting beyond procrastination, sorted. Getting beyond uh, limitations that were conscious and subconscious, both sorted. Now there's a point of this undefined space where I haven't set a target. Um, a lot feels like it's possible. A lot is showing up with a lot of ease. Is there something that can help me have more clarity with it? Like what would I do next to get the clarity of what next? You know, like that receiving part that we're talking about here, there's something huge. And because I don't get it yet, like cognitively, it's it's not a process in my head okay so i'm looking for clarity with the next step or like just getting more understanding of it okay so this is where you are what would you love next yeah that's very confusing <laughs> okay like i'm so happy right. okay that okay. relaxation okay. that okay. what next okay. doesn't feel like a good question okay uh so uh okay so it could be that you're not right now interested in going to the next level or it could be what next okay so after this call what are you going to do next i'm going to read a book cool because everybody's talking about books and okay. <laughs> all right all right okay and i'm going to do the so, forgiveness protocol <laughs> you're going to do forgiveness protocol from the big emotional dot detox program okay. yes um and yeah, then uh, okay and uh, what would you like to do tomorrow? Work out, go to Ikea, find nice furniture, watch a movie outdoors, because curfew is open. 
what a, I see what you're doing there. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah. So this is where right. I am with my work. What else would I love? So work is relatively there. Yeah, like yeah. every morning so, I start that evening. But since you've not I, given me a specific example, I'm giving you a general example. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. So wherever you are, in whichever phase you're talking about, whichever mm -hmm. aspect you're talking about, what would you now love to add? That one little thing. It, you may not right. necessarily know yeah. what next yeah. in terms of the whole future, but what next? Got it. Thank All right. You. Oh, I've just had like a lovely wine. What next? You know, I haven't. I'm just gently giving you. Oh, I mean, done, 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 done. Saturday night, done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this is easy. Yeah. All right, my loves. So, it does not matter whether someone gets you or doesn't get you. Whether someone understands you, doesn't understand you. Whether they agree with your way of functioning or not. What you've got to be willing to do is receive you just the way you are. Now, does that mean that my way or the highway? No, it doesn't have to be like that. However, be willing to see that in this particular case, if I choose my way or the highway, what will that create? Will it create something greater or will it create something lesser? Will it create my life? Will it decay my life? So there will be certain places where I will find another way, which may not necessarily be my way, but doing it another way will just simply create greater. Okay? So you will choose that way. But that does not mean that you have invalidated you. Because if it is something that's going against your grain, and it's not, uh, it's, it's like, uh, not choosing integrity, then anyway, it would be very uncomfortable and you wouldn't go there. But if it's something that's not in, you know, invalidating you, diminishing you, and there's just another way of being able to do it, sure, go for it. But without invalidating you, without, uh, you know, going into the space where you're not honoring yourself. Yeah. So be willing to receive you. You would like others to receive you. How about you receiving you first? With the warts and with the farts and with the beauty and with the joy, with everything. The good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly, all of it. Are you willing to receive you? Yeah, this is who you are. And it's only when I'm willing to receive me, do I even have a choice, uh, you know, to... Uh, change something when I'm not even willing to receive who I am how do I get to even see what's working and what's not working okay so when we are willing to receive ourselves one then we do not require validation okay and because then then the underlying point of view is that I don't you know you don't really need validation you're not from that place of, oh my God, what, you know, like you're, when your worth is not dependent on whether somebody can receive you or not, the energy you be is very different. And then what you create from that energy is very different. And what you create from, am I good enough? Will people like me? So my fundamental point of view itself is, I'm not good enough. I'm not too sure, you know, and that's what I create in my world as my reality so start with receiving you whether anyone can or not and at no point of your no point of time diminish yourself just because somebody feels you're too much doesn't mean you stop being too much just because somebody thinks you're way too kind doesn't mean you stop being kind yes be smart okay be smart how how much kind do I need to be in this situation? Does the situation, uh, you know, will it create greater if I'm kind here or will it create greater if I'm like, you know, a little bit firm and saying no here? Yeah. So be willing to be smart. 
but don't diminish yourself be willing to be just who you are thank you so be willing to be who you are be willing to receive who you are stop measuring your worth by other people's yardsticks they are not your yardsticks okay a quick example i was supposed to be a duffer just because i didn't do well in maths but today if you tell me that i will say okay sure cool if that's what you think but i won't believe it and i will not buy into it because i may still not be very good with maths but i'm fantastic and brilliant with many other things that's just your yardstick that if you know this you're good if you don't know this you're not good that's your standard it's not my standard and i'm willing to receive myself even with lack of that aspect in my life i'm not good at that so what i'm not good at that cool how does it matter yeah my life is functioning well i don't have to know you know trigonometry and algebra and everything for me to say oh i'm good enough i'm fine i'm fantastic so okay so be willing to receive you my loves and be you you came here to be a certain way you didn't come here to be a clone of somebody else you came here to be you so be you you are a very essential component part of this fabric of life if you go missing there will be a hole in that fabric of life so be willing to be you and keep receiving yourselves even if no one else can okay so stay blessed stay safe and have a wonderful time thank, thank you. you bye bye see Take you care. again okay thank